Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton. You've got 27 days until May and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, past papers. Half the skill in sitting any exam paper is understanding what the question wants you to do. And this is why past papers are incredibly useful. Because the first time you sit a paper, it can be tricky understanding what they're looking for. But the next time you sit another paper, you'll have some idea of the sorts of things that they're looking for. By the time you sit your third one, you'll be getting pretty good at this. And with more practice at these types of questions, you will become a lot quicker at understanding exactly what they're looking for. Number one, it increases the chances that you are going to get all the points they're looking for in your answer. And number two, it will make you way quicker at completing that answer and therefore getting to the end of the paper and being able to answer all of the questions. So it really does make a huge difference. It's not so much about knowing more, it's more about how you express yourself. That's why doing past papers is such a useful thing. Nowadays, there are exam papers which are available to download from the internet. This means that you've got a huge library of past exam papers to refer to and practice with. And you can organise that yourself. You don't have to wait for your teachers to give you them. You can download those papers and print them off and have a go at them in your own time. Unfortunately, there's a little tiny problem here, which is that most of the exam boards have such big websites with so many subjects on there that it can be quite difficult to find the past papers that you need. That's where this website comes in really useful. This is fastpastpapers.com. And before you ask, no, I'm not being sponsored by them, unfortunately, but I do think it's an excellent website. I wish I'd come up with it myself. They've got links to the correct part of every different exam board's website and where those past papers are. And it's really simple to use. With just a few clicks, you can get a long list of all the different exam papers which are relevant to what you're looking at. So do have a quick look at it, fastpastpapers.com, and it's going to make it really simple for you to find the papers which you need. Once you've printed off the past paper that you need, try and make sure you're building in having a go at that past paper as part of your normal revision timetable. It doesn't matter if you don't have time to do the entire paper. Just doing 30 minutes worth one day and 30 minutes worth another day, that is absolutely fine as well. You could even be looking at the same paper and do the first half one day and the next half the next day. It's crucially important that you have a look at the mark scheme as well, so make sure you make time for that. As you go through these papers, you will be able to refer to the mark scheme, which you can download from the same website, and you can see where you got the marks, but more importantly, where you didn't get the marks. I've marked an awful lot of mock exam papers in my time, and I find quite a lot of the time that if people had just put this one little extra point in their answer, or if instead of talking around the point, they'd just honed in on what they needed to say, or if they'd just used the right word, little things like that could have a big difference. You'll probably also find that there's little bits which you've overlooked or missed out. Again, I see students time and time again who lose marks not because they didn't know something, but just because they didn't attempt the question. Either they didn't notice it, or they meant to come back to it and forgot about it. So, look out for those things as you mark it. When you've done a paper, you'll probably find that there are some areas which you need to work on. So in your next revision session for that particular subject, those are the areas to focus on. Those are the areas to learn about. Then when you do the next paper, and those same areas will probably be on there, when you do the next paper, you should have improved. Your understanding of those areas should have got better. Now it might not happen incredibly quickly the first couple of times. It sometimes takes a few goes before we really get to grips with an idea. So don't be disheartened if you don't get the mark you want on the very first paper or the very first couple of papers that you do. That's absolutely fine. Just stick with it and you will definitely keep getting better. By the time you're doing your third past paper, you'll see that the exam boards aren't actually all that original. The same kinds of things come up year after year. They'll change around the structure of the questions a little bit, or they might change some of the numbers which they're giving you, but you're going to see the same things over and over again. When you get to that point, that shows that it's working. As you start to recognise what a question is going to ask you before you've even finished reading the question, that's where you know that this is really starting to pay off. 
Try and do it under test conditions. It doesn't matter if you're not doing it for the full length of time for that exam because you don't have time for whatever reason, but try and make sure that you have had a proper go for at least half an hour under exam conditions. One last thing, if you run out of exam papers because you've done all of the past papers, that's fine. Go back and do the first one you did again. Now that may sound a little bit silly because you've already sat down and done that once. If you know the answers, that means you've learned the answers. That's great. That's the whole point of this. So when you set the paper for the second time, you should be able to do better than you did the first time. And that is the best evidence that you could possibly get that you are actually learning the stuff that you need to know. So don't worry about repeating papers if you've run out of them. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.